Well, greetings and welcome once again to STL Soccer Talk, the video edition here at the St. Louis Post-Dispatch and stltoday.com. She's Beth O'Malley. I'm Tom Timmerman, beat writer for St. Louis City. Beth, uh, it's been a while since we've been here, but uh, St. Louis City coming off a, an unconventional victory on Wednesday night over Dallas and a desperately needed victory because it really would have hurt if they didn't win that one. It would have hurt if they didn't win that one, mainly because they were up a man after 12 minutes into mm -hmm. the game. It was a weird game, to say the least, because about 12 minutes in, Dallas's goalie got a red card for a handball. So Dallas had to pull another player off and then sub in their backup goalie for the rest of the game. If St. Louis hadn't won that game, it could have been considered a failure. It's, it easily would have been because that's three points that they should get. And for a while, it looked like they were only going to get one, uh, but they ended up getting three. But, uh, you know, it, seemingly it's the way this season works out. The two new guys, Anthony Markanik and uh, Nukvi Thorison, uh, score the goals. And so it's like really vindication right there for Lutz Van and Seal and his uh, summer transfer window acquisitions because they got, got them the win. Those guys uh, you know, got, got them the goals that won. And also, importantly, Klaus took the field back at home, got a well, really great response from the hometown crowd, and he didn't directly lead to those goals, but definitely his presence on the field helped the rest of the team get those goals. It ended up being a 2-1 game due to a late goal off Dallas. Uh, Berkey had an uncharacteristic flub, but had a solid game overall. It's too bad he didn't get the clean sheet. So it was a good game, a fun game to watch. And now they head to Kansas City. They head to Kansas City for a game on Saturday. Uh, the uh, resumption of the big rivalry between we got to find a name uh, for this rivalry. They're working on it. It would be so much easier if Sporting Kansas City played in Missouri, but since they play in Kansas, it's hard to sell it as a, a Missouri, uh, you know, cross-state rivalry because they're in the next state. It does seem to be a little bit of splitting hairs. They're not that far over the border, mm -hmm. but in, it is considered the Kansas City and Kansas City area does span both states but yeah it's a little bit weird to call it like the Missouri rivalry yeah. when one team doesn't even play in Missouri yeah. so yeah uh, St. Louis City with 47 points uh, is not technically mathematically clinched a playoff spot but that's enough points that should get them in they are one win away from tying the MLS record for wins by an expansion team in a season uh, so if they win one of their remaining eight games they will tie the record win two uh, which is probably a safe bet that they could win two of their last eight. Uh, they will be the winningest expansion team in MLS history, which is a staggering development. <laughs> I mean, it's, like, it's, I, a, it's a fairy tale season, and you get to be the first reporter covering it. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it's quite the responsibility. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, now they go. Now it's, they're pretty much in the playoffs, and now it's can they get home field? Because as we saw last night, home field means a lot. To this team, uh, you, you could you could draw the line between Klaus coming into the game and what Klaus did on the field, but also how the players kind of felt the surge uh, from the from the fans when he came into the game because it really livened up. Not that they weren't lively to begin with, but it really got uh, the fans well, going. They've been waiting See. quite a long time for something to happen, so I mm -hmm. think the having Klaus warming up and then getting ready to go into the game was definitely lighting a fire under multiple people to get them more involved. Yeah. Uh, you know, Nico Giochini didn't play in that game. He's possible for Saturday, but it looks like he won't be out that long. I know that everyone cringes because they didn't think uh, Klaus was going to be out that long. He was out four months. But uh, you know, with a shoulder injury, he was training on the side today. They hope to be able to get him uh, back in soon. Right. So uh, that's uh, good news uh, all around. And, uh, and young Isak Jensen has been loaned and gone back to Denmark uh, for, uh, for a while to, uh, to work on his game. But they uh, hope to have him back and uh, that the time he spends there will you know, uh, improve his game because he's a youngster mm -hmm. and this is his chance. And lots to look forward to in soccer in St. Louis. 
you got the U.S. national team coming to town next week to play Uzbekistan. Uh, St. Louis's Tim Ream is on the U.S. roster. St. Louis's Josh Sargent, though, not on the roster after he got hurt uh, in a game in, uh, in England. He probably would have been on the roster, uh, but hurt, had hurt his ankle as he scored a goal. Uh, for his club, and that's, uh, he's going to be out for a while. So a tough break uh, for, uh, for Josh Sargent. But, um, yeah, and also coming up on Saturday, the bronze boot game at City Park uh, between uh, St. Louis University and Southern Illinois Edwardsville. So all sorts of soccer, all sorts of levels uh, here in, uh, in the STL over the next uh, uh, week and a half, or going back in time forward. It'll be in about a week and a half gap. You can know what I mean. And we talk about all of that and more on the podcast this week, and you'll t we'll talk more about it on the podcast next week and in other weeks to come. So subscribe to the podcast and continue reading the Post-Dispatch. Yes, and until next week, for Bethel Malley, I'm Tom Timmerman. Be seeing you. <laughs>